uh, you are saying, and this is my second session for the day. And in this one, uh, we will be discussing uh, uh, about uh, Microsoft Palm, Chef on List, and Power Automate integration. And uh, let's uh, first we thank to all the sponsors for the event and who supported the event and do use their products. I have used a couple of them and they are pretty good to uh, solving different business problems and helping you to uh, minimize your effort. And so my name is Sudman Amin and I am a Microsoft this is a consultant in all event tools, and I am based in Lahore, um, Pakistan, and I'm a also um, Microsoft uh, uh, MVP since uh, 2015. Sorry for the typo again. I haven't the chance to correct it, and uh, it's 2015, not 2005. And the Microsoft Certified Trainer since 2009. Uh, my favorite topics uh, are SharePoint discussions on SharePoint, my uh, SharePoint migration, uh, working on PowerShell scripting teams and custom development. I have a tech development uh, development background. Uh, I started my career in back in 2005 as a developer, and so continue working till today. I'm also working on SPFX and a couple of uh, apps for different users, customers. And you can reach out to me uh, at, on Twitter at Adan Mean, and you can search about search my name on LinkedIn to stay connected. And if you have any queries, you can reach out to me directly. And today uh, we will be uh, discussing, uh, I will share uh, an overview of the, uh, what we are going to cover today. And uh, after that, I will share a brief overview of, about Microsoft Forms, Power Automate, SharePoint Blitz. And then we'll talk to, uh, to the demo. Uh, that's how um, the things will be working. And uh, if we discuss about the overview, in this one, we uh, have seen the requirements from the business users that where they want an user friendly form for anonymous users also uh, where they can submit the information uh, uh, and uh, that information can be collected in a ship on list for further uh, business processing so uh, today i will show you that how that we are facing fetching information from a microsoft form and uh, submitting it to a ship on list using the power, power automate and after that, I will also show you that uh, how to add, um, uh, execute a form, uh, uh, start a uh, power automate flow using a custom action uh, uh, from the ship and list directly. And also, we'll show you a quick uh, uh, setup of for the uh, uh, for the approval process in in for ship and list or document. So Microsoft Forms uh, is an online survey creator, part of uh, Microsoft 365, uh, and it was released in June 2016. Form allows users to create surveys, quizzes with automatic marketing, collect data, and uh, show them graphically. Uh, form itself uh, infographic is very attractive, and all the data is saved in Excel. The back end. And, and for the, uh, if I discuss about Microsoft List, SharePoint List, um, we, which are also known as Microsoft List now, um, because these are available in Teams and data can be saved in um, personal uh, OneDrive. A list in SharePoint allows you to organize the information dynamically and flexibly. You can create a list from scratch or can use uh, uh, ready made templates that are available. And uh, list is a collection of data. Once you have created a SharePoint related list, you can add SharePoint columns uh, and create views to display data effectively. Additionally, you can sort, group, format, and filter available lists to display the most important and the needed information. It should be mentioned that you can uh, also automate a list to reduce effort and save time and streamline your work. SharePoint Modern List allows you 
people to collaborate directly from their team site for effective content to organization. The shape and modern list experience is highly responsive and, and device friendly. And Microsoft uh, Flow, uh, or we can uh, power or power automate uh, or, or, and power apps have combined directly into shape and modern list, which make it simple to be, build a new um, power app right from the list layout and or, or add a flow. And one more thing that if you have an older list uh, or you have a classic interface list, you can easily change uh, the list interface to modern and you will have all these apps available directly on the list. And Power Automate, the formerly known as Microsoft Flow, is an online tool within Microsoft 365 application used for the creation of automated workflows between apps and services to synchronize files get notifications and collect data and the, this is used mainly for automation of your business processes and they are and they are a couple of external action, action connect, connections available on, on the premium but these are very helpful for automation of your business processes and uh, now i'm going to show, go for the demos here I think you can see my screen. So here, as I, uh, as I discussed that, I already have created a small, uh, a simple patient info form. I'm just going to Microsoft Forms here to show you. And these are the list of forms which uh, I already have created. So if I'm going to create a, a new form here, it's very simple to create the forms here that we can add the title here. This will be the name of the form also. And I can add the different type of fields here that create and it just show me a sample information a sample info from my previous form. So I can have a choice field, text field, and uh, boom, I can add ratings and date. And these are the couple of fields which are available. And if I'm going to add the choice field, I have the option to add multiple choices and uh, I can allow mul uh, multiple answers and can also change the field to drop down or and can also add branches. So these are a couple of options which are available in forms. So if I go back here, and I have already created a patient info, info form, information form here, and where I have, um, it's a very simple form if, if you can see, first name, last name, email address, just added to some basic fields here, date of birth, gender, and the phone number, and these are a few, and you can have more fields, like you can add attachments, uh, but we have we do not have any validation on this one. You can add branches on Microsoft Forms, but you cannot apply any validation on the forms here. So what are you so you can add some subheadings to make sure that the user is submitting the correct correct information. And the, and these are the responses. Whenever we submit the information, the response will be shown like this one. And if there are any choice columns, the information uh, because right now we do not have much data, so it's not showing. Um, the screen do not look too attractive, but you can share it like this one. And uh, from share, you can uh, set up that who can uh, submit the form here, and this could be anyone in the anyone uh, can respond or it's specific to your organization, so you can identify here. And you can also add with uh, uh, share it with other users so that they can also share it. Now I have the form, and I also have created a ship on list here. And list creation is very simple. Uh, if I'm going to create a list here, you can, as I shared uh, told you earlier, that we have a, a set of built-in templates available. You can we can use any of these, uh, and uh, can also create if you have already have an Excel file. With data, you can also create a list from that Excel, but you need to change the 
uh, the for column types and uh, because by default it takes all the all as tags so we can create a, a blank list here so i have created a blank list and we added two columns here you can see some of the basic information here and creation of column is very simple here like i created here and i can add a new column here and you can also go to list settings and create columns here. And this is a list view. You can have we create multiple views here and based on the uh, gender, you can group by them based on gender or based on patient history, whatever the fields you, you would like. Add it as per your requirements. So we have the list and we also have a form here. So now I need to connect it using a power automate flow. So I'm going to power to flow and create a flow here. And I'm going to create a blank flow here. So I'm I'm now I'm going to the I'm opening Microsoft flows here and going to create a new flow here. So here we have the option. Uh, you can see this task activity when a new response is submitted. And why I'm sharing a uh, uh, um, session on this topic because recently uh, we have uh, we did the similar jobs for a couple of customers in US uh, where they have the similar requirement that they uh, they were you they moved uh, within the migration from Google Suite to or Microsoft 365. And they have the similar requirements that they have Google Forms to perform similar tasks and they need to use to use that data also. So we have given this solution and, and this is the least effort uh, uh, least effort required for this one. And I have created this form and I can name it here and we can all change it. Oh, And here I will get the list of all the forms here. And remember my form name was, which I was showing you, is patient information. And now, so now I, I, now we got the trigger when this flow will be initiated. Now I need to fetch the information from the form. To get form details. And here I need to again select the form. And the ID of the response ID. Now I have these two activities available now. And, uh, and here on the form, I'm just uh, verifying few of the fields. I will add here, create item activity i will add uh, this name i share from site just copy the url of the site here okay m365 Some reason I can't see my site name here. I'm just setting a custom value here. It should be shown here. Somehow it's not showing up here. I just have added the URL and now it's shown me the uh, information from the list. 
So I have this special information list there, and it, now it will show me all the fields there. So it's really easy to uh, find the fields here. So one thing here, I just want to show that because the title here is the first name here, but and so this is the field title here. I will add that. First name. OK, this field will not be submitted because uh, the, info, the field type is the uh, from the form and here uh, it's not uh, the, con the, con the type of the field is not matched. So this we will face an error here and email. So gender. Uh, I'm adding custom value here. And make sure that if you have multiple choice fields, the, the choices should be same. same. Okay. Now here we have some. Uh, uh, we have this uh, yes and no field, but here we can't choose that custom option here. So we need to do uh, as a condition here uh, for the for verifying the, the value here. So what I'm going to do here that I will add a value and also uh, as I mentioned that um, we will face an error for the for this field also. So what I need to do I will create a few variables. Uh, for the because this is a boolean field and initialize variable and uh, I mean chemistry and default value I'm selecting as false it's expression here and the default will is set to false and now i'm adding a condition here and Medical history is equal to yes. Then I need to add uh, update the variable um, value of the field. And one more thing when you are working on flows, especially larger flows, make sure that you are renaming the variable fields. Reset variable. And we only have one variable, so we will select. And here we again go to expression and select the expression for true. Now I go here. I will go to custom value here and we will select that medical history variable because it's a boolean type input. Now, uh, as you mentioned that you see that I have added a date of birth field here. It should give me an, uh, an error. No error here. And when I try to submit the form, let's check uh, by submitting a form here. I will just go to the preview here and the 65. Just a random name.
copy the book is Um, some of the information and medical history, I'm setting it no to verify that it should not go to the condition. The form is submitted and let's see. So, see the flow is ran successfully. item in the list let's go to the shipping list go that list oh it added the provide the things they are asked to update here you can see all the information is saved here and the, the gender is set to no here Uh, I just want to add a point here uh, because uh, it have accepted the date field. Uh, I think in last month I have a similar demo and the, the date was not supported till that time. And I need to convert it to string as a string variable and was submitting it. So today uh, I I was uh, looking for an error here on this field, but it went through. It's a good thing, good update. So now, uh, this is how we have submitted the information on, on, on the form. And now, further on this one, you can add uh, any business process here. And if you want to notify to uh, any of the user, send email. You can send an email to a group here or to any specific team. And based on the uh, in input, you can uh, change the, like I added a condition there above. You can uh, route the email to different groups. Or if it's, a, for example, uh, the information is related to a service now ticket or, uh, or a issue ticket. So you can uh, route the email. Uh, you can design the form accordingly and can send email to relevant users. So I have selected an email here and uh, admin so this is the current account which i am using and uh, commission and here i'm adding the And you can get the submission time uh, directly because you recently created the list item. So you can get the item creation time. Uh, and and you can also format it if you want to format it to using uh, uh, any specific date time format. And you can also add some more details here that like that the fields we have in, in the form the same last name email date of birth So here you can see there are two fields. One is the one function effect from the form and the second one, which we have added to the uh, created item. So you can use any of those here. Yeah. Uh, 
I just randomly using two from two different sources. And you can also add here all these values. Click here. I just have added uh, this value here to get the more details here. So let me check if the anchors work, works here. Somehow, uh, this is something which I noticed that uh, with, uh, the anchor field was not working properly. Uh, uh, get the expression, the, get the item ID uh, for the URL field. Link to item and uh, for this one, I, I switch to this option. Okay. So here you can see that I have written added to into here, but it will be showing on the very next line. And there is no option to switch back to the uh, to the uh, designer view. So once you are switched to markup view, it will be in the markup. And uh, you can add more details that from whom you, know, you can change the reply to here and other fields here on the forms based on the requirements. And if there is any attachment, you can also attach it. Uh, and there are different content types. There are different conversions which you can perform on that uh, on the InfoPath form for submitting data to the SharePoint base. Now I'm just saving the changes here, and we run the flow again. So it's an option to test the flow directly from here because we already have a successful run. I go there and we submit the same information. Now it will add an other value to the list. We go there. We'll add a new list item. You can see here, and if I open the email for the user, Just to the chat if you have any questions. Questions so far. So this is a demo found. And here you can see that a new uh, patient information is submitted by this user, and these are the details. And this is the link of the item. And if I click on this one, it will take me to the Item, I think something went wrong. Okay. Somehow that link is not working. Well, I can troubleshoot it later on, but this is how we get the list item details. And uh, it should be working. I think it could happen. So now what we need to do. Uh, here you can see that it's sending the email from the ticket support because I have uh, on, on on my email sending activities. I have set an activity connector for the ticket support, and by default, it just whenever I use the send email activity, it take it take the default user connector connection here. 
So that's why it, it not showing me my name. Otherwise, it when you create, uh, you are going to create your account uh, flow. It will be sending the email from your account. Now, if I go, so this is how uh, we do the integrate the Microsoft Forms. So I use Microsoft Forms for submitting data to a SharePoint list. And let me quickly show you an other uh, piece of work on uh, for the Power Automate. This is a uh, uh, issue tracker list created using the issue tracker template. Uh, and I have added this, this uh, something with, uh, uh, with the list for some uh, blog posts for doing some formatting on the list columns, which you can see here. And also I've applied uh, a document approval workflow, uh, document approval, or you can call it a list approval workflow. So, for creating a list approval workflow, it's very easy that you can go to Power Automate and create a flow. And here you will see uh, a, a, a most commonly used uh, flows here. And here you can see that requests and approval. And here you can have multiple approvals. And this one is that start approval when a new item is added or so we have couple of options that uh, uh, when a new item is added or when uh, an item is selected. And here um, I have you, I already have a integrated approval workflow here. You close here. Close. And let me select this item. And you can see the on the workflow here is showing me that issue tracker request approval workflow. Okay, you can see here, and if I go to the process here, yeah, this is the approval workflow, and I haven't done any changes on the flow here. You can see it's it's a quite long flow where, uh, when it got created. It, it by default selected the current list item and uh, and taking some of the uh, inputs. Whenever a field is selected and it, I haven't passed any of the inf these information, so it's by default. And it's fetching the information of for the selected item ID and then uh, it just adding some of the uh, initializing few of the variables. Just walk through from. Uh, the default template and it's also very good for learning purposes and it's just being uh, waiting for the approval here at this step so what change i have done that i have created a few few columns here when we do the approval it send it create the html output for the output field because when we run the approval it send an email to the user for uh, for approval and i'm just fetching the in, uh, updating the list item after e email is approved or reject, and I uh, and saving the just uh, uh, sharing the details for the mandatory fields, and adding the output for the approval comments and changing the status to blog, or if there is another one, if it's approved and just marking it as approved or close, whatever the twice column I have on that status field. If I go to this one and open any of the list item here, add it all. So here you can see the different approval options here. Completed. So these are the options. So these are different fields. The uh, I think. But now the point, uh, what I want to share is here that um, for the end users, it's really uh, very tricky. To select a list item and, do, and request for submission, and they go to there, and if there could be a possibility that there are multiple flows here. So here I have created a custom action on a list column. Uh, so what I I need to do for this one, I created a column for approval, and it's a blank text field in column, and this uh, uh, formatting here went to the format this column. And added a JSON here. So this is a custom action. Uh, uh, and if you go to the formatting details on uh, docs.microsoft.com for modern list columns, see, uh, in advanced section, you will find that how 
the detail for the custom action, custom row action for the uh, where you can get this execute flow and so uh, details, and you will find more details from, from there. And what I require, it will require the GUID of the flow and how to you can fetch the GUID of this flow. Just go there, and when you open the flow, you can see this uh, GUID here. So this is not the flow GUID. Let me open. When you the flow is here, is the GUID of the flow. Whenever you open the flow, you will find the GUID at the end of the uh, for the flow here, and you can add that GUID on the um, here. And when you click on the list here, it will you can submit it to the it will start the uh, approval process directly. And here you, if you notice something that this is the, this is JSON, and I have made some changes. That it's here it's showing the start approval process. Start, and here the text is changed to restart. And this one do not have any content because based on that, it means that these are the process which required to start the workflow, and which are in process. In I just was testing so. Status was different, and for the completed one, I don't want to run the uh, allow users to start the workflow process. Right now, this is just conditional based. Users still have the option to select it from here and can start the whole process. But to minimize uh, uh, the user experience, so what I have done, one thing is for the custom action, I have added that flow GUID. And now, if you scroll, uh, scroll down here, based on the style completed, known, uh, and uh, I added this style here. So, if the status column is completed, it will not show any text here. So, you can see that it's not showing any displaying any content here. And I go down here, even if the status is rejected. It's showing me research approval and start approval. So if the status is not rejected, uh, rejected, then in that case it's showing the research approval. And also similarly, if it's in progress, you can also hide it uh, uh, the similar way. Like I have, uh, hide, uh, I have within that completed in case of completed here. And this is the action which is uh, whenever uh, the link is clicked, this action will be performed and it will start a workflow process. Let me show you also. When I click on this, uh, on, not on this one, this one. And I am also changing the uh, workflow status when uh, was this started. So it's taking me some of the people. Let me add demo admin also here. Okay. Just these are the default values. I'm not going to those. Do this. So an email will be sent here. Actually, this is an old process, so I'm not so sure that if it's working properly or. The item request is submitted by approval. Is approved. So we got the email here from the flow. Approval and rejection. And if I approve it, my comments and it's submitted. The I'm so and this is also an adoptive card. Uh, uh, also known as actionable adaptive card. And I have submitted the, uh, from here and now I cannot resubmit it from the list. And if I go to the list here and let's see, this was the item. Should. 
okay the action is not completed yet and if i go to the workflow process here check the status one minute ago it's completed now and it should be updated so uh, actually uh, the final action was closed so that's why it's uh, i can't see that update here and let me check one more property here because i'm updating the comment and the information for the comments here so here is it approval comments i'm just fetching all the information which is submitted uh, from that uh, adoptive card for the, whatever the comments so it takes the approval name comments and its status is either it's approved or reject 